Hi, I'm Dylan from Velocity Tech Solutions, and today I'm going to be doing a video on the installation of a 2950 motherboard after the removal. So first things first, we're going to grab the mainboard. I usually do is I'll just kind of place it in so that it fits. You'll kind of push it towards you. You'll kind of hear it kind of secure. There's a bunch of little guiding plates that it will latch onto. And at this point, just push it forward. You should hear it kind of click, and then all the I/O ports should be inside their proper position. Now, first thing you'll do, there are there is an actual order that you'll want to do this in because otherwise you can't get everything installed properly. First thing is go for the back plane. Now, the easiest way to tell um, for a three and a half inch back plane, the top and facing towards you is going to have these three ports. So you'll kind of notice there's a bunch of little guiding lines, and you'll notice there's these pieces of metal. Just kind of put it in so that they match up, and push all the way in, and then down. And it should click into place, and then that should be all set. Next thing you'll do is reinstall the fan mounting bracket. So you'll notice there's two little indents in the metal here, and there's also two right here on the mount. So you kind of push them in, it then should latch into place with this little blue tab, and everything should stay secured. Now at this point, you will reinstall the side plane. It should, you'll notice there's a little metal post that they go into. It will guide right in. Just push down until it secures. And then next, we'll reinstall your RAID controller. So at this, you'll notice there's, again, two little guides. Pretty much everything has them. Line it up with the two little holes on the RAID controller's tray, push forward, and then you're good to go. Reattach them, reattach the cables to their proper place. You'll notice they're very clearly marked, I mean, not marked, but they're very clearly in the right position. You can't really plug it into the wrong one. And then, just guide it in, and then you're good to go. And lastly, with your battery, you'll notice there's two little posts right there, again. Push it in, secures. Now next what we're going to do is get the CPUs. You do not want to have installed the fans yet because otherwise you cannot reach these uh, bottom securing brackets. So you lift up and then you grab this. Now I did not show it, I already pre-cleaned, but what you're going to want to do is make sure that there is nothing on the top of the processor or on the bottom of the heatsink. If you can, the best way to do it is using 99% isopropyl alcohol but that is not really required, it's just kind of, if you want to be as thorough as possible, you can do that. Now, the next thing is there is actually a direction in which the processor needs to go. You'll notice on each processor, there are these two little indents. You'll then also notice on the socket, there are, well, on this one, there's only one on that side. But you'll notice, you just kind of lower it in, match it up so that you aren't, having any possibility of bending the pins should just sit in place and lower that and you should be good to go. And we'll do it again with the second one. Match up the indents. Lower it in watching out for the pins. Again, should go right in place and secure down. Next, we are going to grab our heat sinks. And we're going to take our thermal paste. Now when you do this, some people, they tend to think you need to put a lot on, you really don't. Um, a lot of people say normally in between the size of a BB and a grain, or a P. So I usually do about that, that's really all you need. And the heat sink itself will actually, from the pressure, spread this around the entire top of the CPU, so you do not need to pre-spread this. And what we do is put the heat sinks on. Make sure the they line up right there. There's really the only way for them to fit. And then secure them down. Next, we can go for our fans. Right. Hmm. There we go. All right. So now we got that. We'll then reinstall our memory. Now, if you're not filling up all the banks, um, if you remember how they went in, that's perfect. But otherwise, you can know it goes in essentially every other one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll install our memory. 
make sure both of the latches on each side clip all the way down. Some people don't always put them in all the way and it doesn't boot. And then we grab our risers. We got that one. And then with this, again, little metal guides. Super easy. Push it down. Should be good. Then take this little cable guide. Just push that in. Should kind of latch in right there. And lastly, you're going to take your shroud. You'll notice there's, actually you'll notice there's uh, little black pieces that they'll kind of latch on to with these two little rounded out corners. Push it on. That should then secure down onto here. And then take your DVD drive. Take that cable that we unplugged. Reroute it. Through here. Then reconnect it into the side plane. And lastly, at this point, just plug back in your power supplies and hard drives. And then, assuming there's no other bad parts that you have, it should be all set to boot and good to go. Anyways, I hope this helps, and again, this is Bill from Velocity Tech Station.